This I wanna nail sports to the one Top blog out of the YouTube channel No matter which sports here we got it covered Subscribe and hit the notification bell What's up my wonderful peeps? Sports to the board here again man Shout out to all the viewers, the subscribers and the followers Big up on yourself Alright so we have a couple of things that we want to talk about this morning uh, Three things in particular And you know we're not gonna be too long on the weekend here because you know Manchester United playing and I have to watch that from start to finish Alright, so the three things that we're going to talk about One, Christopher Henry Gale making a post or making a quote To remind us that he's the best to ever play this T20 game And second, Sir Curtly Ambrose not getting the, the, the job as the elite pace bowling coach of England And third and final you know, a lot of Jamaican people would remember the name Michael O'Hara and it was expected that, you know, O'Hara's name would be on all Jamaicans' lips by now seeing how dominant he was back in high school, especially in 2015 when he was finishing up high school and how he dominated champs and all of that. We're going to talk about what's happening with O'Hara along with those other two things. Yeah, man, viewers and subscribers, so I am not definitely sure when this interview was done or when this quote was said by Christopher Henry Gale but it has been making the rounds on social media so I decided that I would pull um, a picture of it from the Circle of Cricket website so that I can show it to you guys now the Circle of Cricket they have a website they also have um, a page on Facebook that they usually post a lot of um, cricket stuff usually credible stuff so I decided that here what I'm going to take down this picture and share it with my viewers and my subscribers just to show us that um, Christopher Henry Gale is in no way, shape or form um, ready to bow out of the game. You know, actually telling us to put some respect on his name and stuff like that. Now, we all know that Christopher Henry Gale is in short and confidence in any way, shape or form. And I mean, you can see what he's saying in the quote here. You know, he's saying that boy is the best to ever do this thing. You know, you know that he's the greatest and all of that. And I can't even to knock him for saying that. Because at the end of the day, his record speaks for itself. And not a lot of cricketers you find doing it at age 41 at the level that Christopher Henry Gale is actually doing it. So for him to be saying it, people might say that here what? It's a bit too, you know, it can't tone down. But at the end of the day, if he's backing it up. I guess you know he's free to do so and with the World Cup coming up or with the World Cup um, supposed to be coming up in this year but the universe boss is actually not only flexing his muscles as it regards to batting he's going right ahead and reminding us that here what don't get this thing twisted I have the greatest to ever do it and you know boy especially with the IPL coming up right now we know that Gail is a person that usually speaks and then he usually goes out and dominate. So I guess he's just um, setting, just paving the way for the IPL just to show people that hear what? You might be young, I might be old, but I am going to dominate you just the same. And we would have seen um, this over a period of time from Christopher Henry Gail. So him coming out and saying things like that, I doubt I, we, I doubt we should even say it is egotistic of him because it is sort of his personality and we would have seen a lot of players that are like that and would have gone out and you know would have actually proven that here what I can back up my talking because even if we look to football we see somebody like Azlatan Ibrahimovic you know somebody that speaks a lot but is usually backing it up so Chris Gale is basically almost the same type of character um, you know as regards to going out and saying things and then just going out and dominating so it's going to be good to see the master and um, the master in action especially in this IPL here and you know we know that we have some of the quickest bowlers um, in the IPL we're talking about our um, Archer or I think probably Rob Bada. you know a lot of um, these um, pace bowlers they will be gunning for the for the universe boss but um, Gail would have shown over the past years that age is just a number when it comes to him so you know it's going to be pretty interesting to see what the universe boss um, is going to be um, doing in this year's IPL especially seeing that he would have come out and make a statement like this just to remind everybody that here what don't take this thing for granted I am still here and once I am here I am the universe boss you know we are talking about 
around about 13,584 runs as it regards to T20 cricket for Christopher Henry Gale. And within that, we have 22 centuries and um, 85 half centuries. Just let that sink in, 22 centuries. You know, the amount of cricket that don't even make half of that in ODI or in um, Test cricket and they would have played a lot of games. I know that Chris Gale would have played a lot of T20 games, but to make 22 half um, to make 22 centuries in T20 cricket, that's not normal. That's basically unheard of. 22 centuries and 85 half centuries in T20 cricket. Man, the man have a right to say whatever I want to say right now as it regards to T20 cricket. You understand? I mean, he's not as young as he used to be, but he's still there and he's still dominating. In the IPL the other day, I mean, he didn't play majority of the first um, games, of the first couple of games, you know, because they were playing Glenn Maxwell. But as soon as he got a chance, he was out there dominating. You know, I think it was Glenn Maxwell that they, was, that they were actually playing instead of Gale. And when Gale got a chance, he went out there and he dominated. So, um, I will most definitely be looking forward to, you know, seeing Chris Gale on the IPL scene once again. Um, you know, there isn't a lot of uh, T20 opening batsmen that will easily say here what I deserve a spot over Christopher Henry Gale. So it will be good to see. And with the World Cup coming up, it's going to be pretty interesting to see the direction that West Indies will go as it regards to selecting or not selecting Christopher Henry Gale. I mean, just the other day they would have said that here what we are still harboring thoughts of selecting Gale and also doing Bravo. And these are two of the greatest T20 players to ever play the game. Probably one could say that Gale is the best to ever do it overall. But when it comes on to bowling, probably doing Bravo is the best to ever do it. Full of bag of tricks and all of that. So um, I guess it's an olive branch by the West Indies, um, by the West Indies Federation there to show that we are still in need of Gale and Bravo. Yeah, man. So that's basically it as regards to Chris Gale, guys. Now, um, just going to take a look at Sir Kirkley Ambrose. Just last month, um, I think it was in, in the earlier part of last month, Kirkley Ambrose made it public that he would have um, applied for the job of elite pace bowling coach of England. You know, the England Cricket Board would have put out um, an advertisement saying that they wanted an elite pace bowling coach elite um, spin bowling coach and I think he was a bat batting coach and our own currently Ambrose applied and was saying that boy was feeling pretty confident that um, you know he was saying that boy anything that he's doing he feels um, he usually feels very confident about it and I did a story about that you know because it's actually good to see that currently Ambrose is branching out we know that he is doing some commentary and thing but uh, I actually applied. So we're going to look at what happened as regards to that. No, it was published that Ambrose wasn't um, successful in his bid of becoming the elite pace bowling coach of England. And I mean, I am really happy that he tried. You know, he went for the job. When the advertisement was put out and he applied, you know, he would have given an interview saying that boy he was comf um, confident of his interview and he was comfortable with what he would have shared with them of his ideas and his plans and all of that. And I mean, he actually made the short list, you know, so it's not like boy he wasn't uh, considered, he made the short list and, you know, he just wasn't successful um, this time around. Uh, I mean, Ambrose seems to be in very uh, good spirits, you know, because he was saying that boy in an interview, he was saying that he thinks that it is a right step, it is a step in the right direction as regards to him becoming an a, a elite coach. And at the end of the day, I can say that boy, I am proud of him. I am happy that he actually went out and tried. Hopefully the WICD will see this as a wake up, as a wake up calling to know that here what, we have one of the best um, to that would have ever done this thing as regards to pace bowling. So, you know, hopefully they will rope him into the, into the setup because at the end of the day, we have some very good um, youngsters coming through, some pace bowlers that they would need the guidance. 
You understand as it regards to the technical aspect and as it regards to the physical work that is needed to step to the next level. So um, high and currently Ambrose right now would be a step into the right direction, you know, to show that we are once again thinking about dominating the world as regards to pace bowling. Um, all in all, Sir Curtly Ambrose, he wasn't successful in his bid, but we are indeed proud of him. You understand? Because he made that step. Now, on to the final one, guys. Um, Michael O'Hara, we're going to talk a bit about him. Yeah, man, viewers and subscribers, you will remember that fresh out of high school in 2015, I think it was, Michael O'Hara um, signed a contract with Puma and began working with the lights of um, Yuan Blake, uh, Warren Weir, and Usain Bolt. And I mean, great things were actually expected of the youngster, seeing that he would have dominated high school sport, not only just champs, but he would have dominated a couple of events on the world stage in um, age group. You know, you know, so boy, it's really a bit sad to see what 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 Michael Howard has been going through as regards to his career stepping um taking the step to the next level. No, O'Hara won the, the 200 meter in the under 18 um championship in 2013. And I mean, the guy was basically untouchable as it regards to his age group. When you're talking about 100 meter, 200 meter, 110 meter hurdles, especially um, in our high school championship here, O'Hara was on a next level. We're talking about a man so dominant that his peers probably trembled once they heard his name, um, while, once they heard the name Michael O'Hara. Now, skipping back to his personal best a couple of years ago of 10.19 over the 100 meter and 20.45 over the distance of 200 meter, you know, things just haven't gone in the youngster's favor. And fast forward all the way to 2021, he's currently working with his high school coach, you know, somebody that would have worked with him when he was successful um, attending Calabar and things like that. Uh, when we look at the race as track club, you know, he had all the, he had all the things there to motivate him as regard to training with both Blake and Glenn Mills as a coach. But, you know, sometimes the environment isn't the best for you and you have to make a change. And based on what I heard in an interview, O'Hara is saying that boy going back to, I think he made the switch back in 2020, I think it was in early 2020, and decided to start training back with, um, I think it is Coach Swell over there in Calabar. You know, um, he's saying that boy is feeling familiar once again and he's, you know, they, he's saying that boy the chemistry is there because um, it's not as if he has to go and fit into something new because he would have worked with the team there um, when he was attending high school and he found success. So I am just imagining that boy, uh, he would have had a couple of injuries. It's not like he was there and not running properly or not running fast. You know, he had a couple of injuries and things like that. So the mere fact that he is back working with Coach Swell, I am hoping that things will work out. And this coach is actually a very good coach. Now, according to, to, to the man himself, you know, he was saying that boy right now, he has learned the lesson. And that is something that a lot of youngsters coming out of high school need to be aware of. You know, just dominating high school doesn't necessarily mean that you are going to make the transition easily. And O'Hara is saying that boy has learned the lesson that he needs, you know, to become successful. And being that successful in high school, probably he was thinking that boy is going to be easy to transition. And everything is different because you prepare different you are in a different environment, all of that, a lot of things um, can contribute to whether or not you are successful coming out of high school going, going pro, you understand? Um, we're talking about things like the training program, the re you know, all of that is different because when you are sharpening up for champs, it's different from when you are training, you are doing a training that, you know, you want to peak um, in the fourth year as regards to peaking at the Olympics. So everything is a bit um, different. Um, a technical people here that knows track and field will understand, will understand what I'm saying. But all in all, we want to see Michael O'Hara returning to his best, that dominant youngster that we, that we would have seen in high school. We want to see him back again, you know, that bold youngster that actually in the last part, yes, open up the shirt and say, be extraordinary when, 
We all know what was happening there. We want to see Michael O'Hara back at his best when all is said and done. Because Jamaica's um, sprinting isn't at the peak as it was a couple of years ago as regards to the male. You know, so we want, you know, if O'Hara is back at his best, then it would be good for Jamaica. So that's basically it, guys. Not going to stay on too long. As I said earlier, you know, we have to prepare for the Manchester United game. So that's it, guys. Christopher Henry Gale reminding us that he's still the best. Currently, Ambrose not successful in getting the job over there in England, but will continue to push forward. And Michael O'Hara seems to be turning the corner. Sports in the bone, keeping it informed. Please remember to like, share, leave us a comment. If you have not yet subscribed, remember to subscribe to the channel. Big up on yourself.